Welcome back, it is still I, Niblet K. Welcome to part 5, I believe. Maybe I shouldn't say the parts anymore, just... Hey, welcome back! Yeah, we're gonna go back into what we're known for doing right now. Uh, <laughs> which is reviewing Rastacon Cards. Okay, first on the list... Ooh, the Legendary Loa for Rogue. 5 mana 2-2. Two, two. Growl the shark. That is terrifying. Look at that mouth. That's terrifying. Okay. 5 mana 2-2. Two, two. Ah, that seems bad. That seems really bad. Now let's see what what does he do. Balakrai. Eat a minion in your deck and gain its stats. Okay. So it's a 5 mana 2-2 two, two, plus whatever it is that the stats are from a minion in your deck. So that can be any anything from a 1-1 one, one to an 8-8 eight, eight or anything like that, right? Depending on what you run. Most of the times you might have mid-rangey stuff. So 3-4, something like that uh, on attack and health values. So it might, might be somewhere around a 5-5. Five, five. Let's say it's a 5-mana five 5-5 five, five most of the times. Um... It also states death rattle add it to your hand so one you thin out your deck and you get that card after you've utilized it on the board and then you can utilize it yet once more in its true form um, so mm, this kind of has a really awkward balance to it because this card is one of the cards that is really susceptible to silence, right? This is the kind of card that is really good most of the times, but it's going to be, you know, that, that situation is going to feel really bad when this thing gets silenced. And depending on how good this card is, uh, this is one of those cards that can dictate a meta, a very silence heavy meta uh, due to this kind of uh, behavior. If this card is going to be top in ranks and being always played, the counter to it specifically is going to be that silence. Because you're effectively making this thing back into a 2 2 and you're killing off, you're killing off. A card from your opponent's deck that is the go-to counter for this thing another counter would be to steal it in a, in a way but that's kind of hard to do <sighs> so I believe this card is bad but it's also good as long as it's like here and there you know it all depends on the meta but this thing is the kind of card that can define a specific meta or a counter meta if that makes any sense to you I encourage you to try this card out it has a really cool effect really nice death rail really nice battle cry it's going to uh, you know make up for some really interesting games other than that uh, may RNG bless you and not get silenced <laughs> yeah that's all that's all I can say Okay, next we have Hakar the Soul Flayer. This is a neutral minion. 10 mana. Hoo hoo hoo. So, really high impact on the mana curve. 9-6. Um, mm, the stats are not that bleh. Meh. Okay. Death Rattle. Shuffle a corrupted blood into each player's deck. Hmm, that means nothing to me right now, so I'm actually going to have to go to, let's see, Hakar the Soul Flare. Let's just write Hakar, yeah, Hakar the Soul Flare. There we go. See what we get. Uh, go to Hearthbone. Okay, there we go. 
we got the Corrupted Blood. It is a one mana spell. So each player gets this thing inside of their deck. And it says, Casts when drawn. Take three damage. After you draw, shuffle two copies of this into your deck. Hmm. Okay. So you cannot get rid of this card. And each time you draw it, you get two more inside of your deck. So that means first you're going to take three damage. And you're going to have potentially six damage inside of your deck that you're going to take throughout the game. Each time you draw another one, you're going to place three more inside of your deck. And you can already see that this is the kind of thing that can win you the game. So it's a win condition in itself. However, it's also a possible lose condition because you also get that. Now, the counter to this is Skulking Geist specifically. So if there's a lot of Hakkar the Soul Flare inside of the meta, uh, you're just going to have to play Skulking Geist inside of your deck and wait for the right moment to do that. Uh, also, you might not want to do that because, like I said, it's pretty much a coin flip. So if you have a good way to uh, make your opponent draw more cards than you do, uh, then um, you know this might be something that is going to work against them. Also, you might want to run Hakkar the Soul Fair and then just uh, force your opponent to draw as many cards as possible. That might be a, a you know thing for it as well. Um, yeah. Uh, here you can see best class the statistics. We got Druid and Paladin. Don't know exactly why Paladin. Maybe because they can heal so much. I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's get back into this. So, a card, the Soul Flare, is a good card to have. Like you know, it's one of those really high impactful things that can win you the game. It makes up for interesting matches and see how you know things are going to go. Other than that, I don't know if it's like a go-to card that you might want to put in each and every deck or specific decks. But the way you know the way this works. I would say that most of the times when you, you're you going to have Hakkar the Soul Fair inside of your deck, you're pretty much going to try to make, like, let's say 80% of your deck revolve around this specific, um, you know, win condition. So it's a good card. It, it's definitely a good card. It's a, you know, RNG based a little bit, uh, revolving around if you win or not depending on how much support you can give it from your deck specifically. Okay. Zandalari Templar. A 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. Good. Good. Decent stats. Uh, it is a Paladin card. Uh, really digging the artwork there. That's a nice looking nice looking weapon there. Okay. Balakrai. If, you're, if you've destroyed 10... Well, no. Nah. Sorry. Can't read. Can't read. Sorry. If you've restored 10 health this game, gain plus 4, plus 4, and taunt. Okay, we've seen this kind of cards before, uh, in Warlock specifically. Uh, there you have to take damage and be under 15 uh, to get a buff and taunt on a specific 4 cost minion. Um, this thing gets to be an 8-8 eight, eight taunt for 4 mana, so really impactful, really good. Um, the entire gist of the thing is you need to be at 20 health and you need to come back up and heal 10 health easier said than done but as we're going to see in further uh, card reviews uh, Paladin is getting a lot of uh, self damaging and also healing cards so heal paladin is you know like the basic principle the 
basic um, theme for this uh, expansion. So that said, I think Zandalari Templar uh, has a perfect fit in a specific heal paladin, um, you know, deck, and it's definitely impactful. It all revolves around how effective heal paladin can be, and it's definitely getting some tools for that. So we might actually see a couple of versions pop out. Some of them might actually be really good. You know, I'm just waiting to see exactly how good it is uh, because usually paladins uh, lately have been more in the zoo form, in the aggression form. So that might also be, um, you know, the way you want to go with paladin for more easier and more relaxed games. But it's nice to see that we're going to go back to like more control mid-range style decks as well and that is nice to have you know the diversity is really good to have in a card game and you know having more diversity means having more fun first of all and not always playing against the same thing uh, you know makes up for better content and also better games in in the form that you actually have to think more okay now i'm playing against paladin hmm Okay, no surprise there, it's Token Paladin, it's Baku Paladin, oh yeah, oh, it's, everyone's playing that. No, now it can be, oh, well, let's see, is this guy aggressive, is this guy heal Paladin, is this guy control Paladin, is this guy playing just a little bit of healing and trying to control and go for like OTK combos or stuff like that. It's going to be more, you know, engaging in specific matchups not always going to go like straight oh yeah it's the same paladin deck whatever <clears throat> war master voon hell yeah he looks like a metal guy he looks like he's doing that but now he's actually just keeping his hand up because he only has like three fingers like that but you know whatever troll champion okay four mana four three nah. mm. bad stats to be honest not not that bad but mm, bad okay dragons we already see dragons inside of the text battle cry copy all dragons in your hand really high impactful battle cry if you're playing a dragon deck like i said dragons tend to be more beefier and you know solid cards so doubling up on specific cards like that is definitely a good resource you know uh, I don't really, really know how to say it, but you, you get more resources of good stuff that you already have. Now, you're probably not going to play him as fast as turn 4, probably, because you tend to want to have specific early game counters or, you know, trying to... If you're, if you're a control deck, you want specific counters and control tools in your early game. And you're not gonna play War Master Voon on turn four. It's more like a late game card where you have assembled a couple of pieces of dragons or dragon based synergy things inside of your uh, hand. Even if you double up on just like, let's say, a Ysera, right? You have one Ysera in your hand, you play War, uh, War Master Voon, then you can play Ysera, your opponent deals with it. Uh, utilizes some of his resources and then surprise here's you Sarah yet once more or any any other kind of high impactful dragon is already going to be really good but you know it all depends on how well your survivability is well, this isn't warrior and warriors tend to survive longer than most other classes so we just have to see exactly how good is Dragon Warrior going to be. Is it going to be viable or is Mech Warrior or some other form of Warrior out there better? But it's a good card. I like it. Okay, next we have a 2 mana 2 2 Fire Tree Witch Doctor. Battlecry. This is in neutral card. Okay. If you're holding a dragon, discover a spell. Okay. Okay, I can see that. I can see I can see that being really good. So if you're playing dragons, 
this is definitely a good card to have in the early stages of the game you know trying to get a little bit of tempo getting a couple of spells out of it really impactful you can get all sorts of nonsense so it's definitely good at priest and warrior as we see i don't know exactly what other you know hunter has some dragons in it just saying you know it's not really being played it's more like posse beside and forgotten about but other than that might you know it might end up being a thing because hunters are also getting specific things that revolve around spells as well you know and dragons with spells that might be a combination out there that might be interesting to see i don't know i'm just saying but this card for dragon specific based decks is a good card to have just saying this is a good card regardless but it only works in the specific niche of its brand so to say which is dragons other than that it's crap you're not gonna play this on its own for just the body or you know anything else uh, and you're not gonna play this with just a couple of dragons you're going to pretty much go like 50% of your deck has to revolve around dragons other than that it's gonna be crap okay uh, since we mentioned hunter here's the card uh, two mana spell revenge of the wild excuse me uh, summon your beast that died this turn now we saw a couple of um, demos so to say on revenge of the wild it's really good really good especially with um, Flark's Boomzooka or whatever that thing is called, which allows you to get uh, really high impactful beasts that charge or rush or whatever they do and they die and then you play this thing again and then you just summon them back. Uh, this thing is really good with uh, Unleash the Hounds. Your opponent has a lot. You get four, five, whatever it is that you get those little hounds you know you get a bunch of those you trade them all in you do what the most damage that you can and then you just play revenge of the wild and you get all of them back you maybe clear off the rest the remainder of things that are still on the board or you just go face with all that imagine if you still have like a knife juggler in play and you you double up on all of your uh, knife rows so that's another thing uh, you might play this passively you might just you know play your your game out and you have like two to three maybe beasts on the board and your opponent plays like a big taunt trying to shut you down you just smash everything into that taunt you clear the board sure your board is cleared your opponent feels happy haha i shot you down you just play revenge of the wild you get your entire board back no problems whatsoever so this is a really good versatile card in a plethora of decks that hunter can utilize and yeah this is just a good card and like i said before you know dragons might end up being in here you know getting this randomly but this thing also revolves around beasts so you need dragons beasts and spells so it kind of maybe i don't know we'll just have to see okay next we have the amani war bear this is a neutral seven mana five seven uh rush beast with taunt this is a bad thing to have it's not something you want it's not as bad of a minion but being at seven cost you might actually want to have better things you know from seven plus uh cost cards you're probably gonna find better things but it's just you know one of those cards that is really good for arena maybe or you know as a one-off or maybe you generate it randomly from specific things it is a beast uh sure it's not a low cost beast so you don't you you won't get it in the zombies pool but nonetheless it still is a beast uh you know specific decks like running beasts 
So yeah, I say this card is bad, but it's not as bad, you know, to have in the game for specific things, reasons, or whatever. So yeah, that's that's my opinion on Amani Warbear. Good to have in the game, but not that excited about it. Okay, uh, next we have Lickem. This is this is a really cool shaman card. Okay, it's a shaman weapon. A two two cost one three. Okay, so stats are meh from the get go, but it says has plus two attack while you have overloaded mana crystals. So every time you have overload on you, uh, this thing is a two mana three three, and that is a really good card. And Shaman usually utilizes a lot of overload mechanics, so I believe this card is really good. And it's definitely going to see a lot of play, a lot of play. I, I, I'm saying it. This card is good. This card is really good. It's, it's going to be there. Well, sorry about that. I gotta stop doing that. Hmm. I don't know exactly how, but. I'll figure it out. Okay, High Priest Thakal. This is the Troll Champion, legendary minion for Paladins. 3 mana, 3 4. Good stats, we already know that. Battlecry, convert all but one of your hero's health into armor. This is the card, the go to card that allows Paladin to go full on heal mode from the get-go uh, this is like the base card that is probably going going to push healed paladin archetype uh, into a really competitive state because effectively this thing will set you down to one health and all of the other health that you had gets transformed into armor so that means if you're playing this at 30 health, you're going to go down to 1 health and 29 armor. And then you can start healing back up to 30 uh, while still having a lot of armor. Um, it kind of doubles up, so to say, on your health. Um, really good card. You know, it's the kind of thing you want to play as fast as possible in order to make it work. This is not the kind of card that will help you out if you're in a losing state, if you're behind, if you're far later into the game. It's not going to help you out that much. It's still going to give you some armor, like don't get me wrong. Unless you're at, at two life when you play this, uh, you only get one armor. Uh, but other than that, you still require healing, right? You're gonna play this in a healing deck, so chances are that even in the later stages of the game you're still pretty healthy because you're going to be trading a lot, you're going to heal back up and you know utilize other things like that. So it's still a good card even in the later stages of the game, but it's definitely going to help out your you know your niche of being a heal paladin. Uh, as fast as possible is you know as fast as possible when you can play this play it so yeah that's a good card it's definitely a good card I don't know if it's going to see any other play other than a heal paladin specific but other than that yeah I like I like the card it's really cool okay walk the plank four mana Spell for rogues. Destroy an undamaged minion. Yeah. It's a good card. It's definitely a good card. It doesn't require a combo. Anything that it requires is that the demon that you're going to destroy is not damaged. So, it's a little bit iffy on one side because rogues already have um, vicious scale bane I believe 
it's called vile hide something but I told you guys I'm really bad at names today <laughs> vile spine slayer there we go <laughs> Whew. vile spine slayer is a five mana combo card that destroys anything specifically and that is run always in each and every rogue now this is a good card to have doubles up on you know destroying things we also have assassinates on five mana not really used so, i don't know but it's it's a good card to have you know a lot of people are talking about rotations and we are getting like bits and pieces that you know when you see them you're saying like oh we already have this kind of card already inside of another set and yes that is true but this is a new card and this is going to stick around for the upcoming year that is going to hit um, you know when the other expansion hits uh, we're going to have our yearly rotation and a lot, of, a lot of the things are going to be tossed back into wild so that means there's going to be a lot of room for this kind of new things to take place okay that's those are my thoughts on walk the plank it's good to have in the game it's a good card but as of you know what it is that we already have inside of rogue uh, I don't believe this is going to see any play because we already have like more better decent things to work with if that makes any sense see you guys in the next one